How you doing? Welcome to Community Crossfire, another point of view. I'm your host, Norman Oliver. What an incredible show we're going to have this evening. So sit back, get your popcorn, like I would say, and just enjoy. I have three brilliant minds, um, uh -oh. and they probably won't accept that, but since I'm the host, I can say that. Uh, before I go to my guests, um, a few things I always like to have a few things to say. I got an opportunity to talk to McKee Booker uh, this week, uh, the head of Black, uh, Black Lives Matter here in the city of Wilmington. And my message to him and my message is to a lot of folks, and that's why I'm bringing these folks on this, this evening, is that you're the new leadership here in the city of Wilmington and in the state of Delaware. So with leadership come responsibility. And sometimes I may make comments. It has nothing to do with my like or dislike because I support you 100 percent. But there has to be dialogue and dialogue is because of leadership. And sometimes you disagree or agree with leadership, as I've done with these three guests here today. So I would say to McKeeb, I would say to T. Warren, I would say to Cooley and Duffy Samuels and all you guys that you are the new leadership. And so a lot is expected from you. And sometimes you have to watch what you say on Facebook. And I say that to even Vash, who's a friend, uh, still considering though we may have our dis had a disagreement, but you guys are the new leadership. So in saying that, I'm going to go to my guests. Um, I'm going to introduce um, Mr. Ted Blunt. How you doing, Ted? Thank you. Uh, Ms. B.B. Coker. <laughs> Hi. And Jim Baker. Oh, so, so guys, in your own way, like we, we had a lot of discussion before we came on the air and, and we were talking about history. If, if you could think of one incident, right, if you could point to in the city of Wilmington that could just like, wow, you could just remember it. I don't know if it's the march or something happened in government, something happened in DSEG or anything. What would be that moment, Ted? Uh, for me, it would probably be the um, reorganization of the school system. Okay. Uh, starting in uh, 1978. And how the issue wasn't whether or not black students wanted to sit next to white students for the citizens of Wilmington. The issue was we were not adequately funded or treated fairly. Mm. We just wanted equal funding. Mm. We weren't even asking for equity. Wow. Just equal funding. And you remember that just vividly? Yeah, absolutely. Wow. I mean, I was right there. I was a part of the process. You, you, you see it all playing out. Mm. And the judge said, if you guys, meaning the, the various leaders in the other districts as well as throughout the state, if you cannot make a decision, I will make one for you. Mm. Wow. I will dissolve 11 districts and make one. So this is what the judge said. That's what the judge said. Mm -hmm. B.B., if you had um, a moment that just reflective, what would you say that moment was? Exactly what he just said. And uh, simply because we knew uh, Jim and I belonged to a small group. I think there were maybe 11 of us. A lot of people talk now and say, oh, they were a part of, we didn't want this, that, and the other. I know exactly what Ted's talking about because had it not been for Ted, there would not have been any jobs for black principals and stuff. We know that. But we fought against the desegregation of schools because it wasn't a desegregation of education. It was desegregation of friggin' school buildings, which meant that you were talking about bricks and mortar and black kids sitting by white kids. And our group was saying that school education in the city of Wilmington wasn't the problem, housing was. The housing laws were closed. You could not buy a house anywhere you wanted to. And by the way, Joe Biden was fighting for us to help us get this law passed. The open housing laws passed right after doggone school buses started rolling. By that time, it was too late. And thank goodness I was sent to Washington on a job because I was so sick of Delaware by that time, I was hurting. We were all hurting. And when I came, when I got to Washington, I remember it wasn't even three months, we started getting calls from everybody and his brother. Oh, we should not have uh, let the buses roll. We shouldn't have done this. I said, talk to the hand. Because we begged people in this community not and to be, do it. Just before, what he said. before you go any further, I'm going to go to Jim after this. Yeah. But you said something, and I've read something about Joe Biden, but they were saying yeah. that he was not for DSEG or he was for it. In other words, they he were wasn't. trying to, they, oh, oh, they were trying to paint a picture almost 
as if he didn't want the that's blacks right. to go out there. And was that, that was, was that a bad decision, a right decision? No. Or is the story getting told wrong? That the story is getting told wrong. And the person that said it was that Harris lady from California. She knew nothing about it. And if she had looked into the situation, if I mean, if you're going to say something, then do the research on the facts. She would have seen that at that time, Joe was in the state and he was uh, pushing the bill for open housing. OK, Jim, Jim, um, what comes to mind for you? Just something that <clears throat> actually uh, when I first came to Wilmington, OK, I got off the I came from New York. Uh, I have never heard of Wilmington, to tell you the <laughs> truth. Uh, I was in New York and they said, uh, doing my training there, and they said, well, where do you want to be assigned when I was in Vista? And I said, well, New York, Cleveland, and there was another city I put in there, Chicago or something. But anyway, when they finally made a decision, they said, we're sending you to Wilmington. So you just sent them, come here to Delaware because yeah. of a Vista worker? Yeah. Vista. Uh, yeah. And they said, well, we're sending you to Wilmington, Delaware. And I said, okay. I said, I know about Dover. I know they have the whipping post. Wow. <laughs> well, I didn't know that much about it. I know they have the DuPont company. That was it for me about Delaware. Because I'd never been in Delaware in the first place. Then you come to Delaware and you become the longest serving yeah. city council president <laughs> and the first mayor to serve uh, three terms. Yeah, but I mean. Uh, but you got to reflect on that though, Ted right? and I both, we, Ted, Ted came together. here from yeah. Philadelphia where he, uh, Used to do a lot of running. And <laughs> <laughs> Jim, let me let me start this for one second, right? Uh, but when you reflect on that now, right? Because yeah. you've been out of it. What, how do you feel? I mean, what's your thoughts? I mean, the, I mean, I'm you, being a what out? The, the being a president that long and being the mayor who served that long. I, I mean, never really think about it because it's just something that happened. Um, I'm, I'm glad it happened because I like winning. Um, I think that winning is the only thing that counts in life. But anyway, um, I, I, you know, Ted and I worked together for, for a long time and outside of politics, inside mm -hmm. politics. Ted and I have had a lot of battles and arguments. You've had, had them with me. Mm -hmm. I've disagreed with BB on things. But we still remain friends. Mm -hmm. And it seems like a lot of people can't do that today. I don't know why. But they once they get on to something, they start hating the other person or despising the other person or trying to undercut the other person. Mm -hmm. Instead That's of, interesting. it's just an issue, go on. And Ted, you know, um, uh, I didn't know that you had anything to do with the um, principles, with black oh, principles. Sure. I didn't know yeah. you had anything to do with black principles here in the city. The, uh, under the school system, principles under Newcastle teachers, County, really? prior to getting there, the most powerful person was Wendell Howe. Mm -hmm. Wendell Howe's buddy was me. Wow. So Wendell Howe became the chairman of the school board, and I became the chairman of the housing authority yeah. board. Yeah. You right. were the chairman of the housing authority board? Yes. <laughs> I hired Wendell. Wendell hired me. Yeah. Wow. They even wrote an article about us. They sure did. It was called Scratch My Back Theory. <laughs> <laughs> because we that? were smart enough to understand the system. Wendell was able to take information provided to him uh -huh. to make sure that every Wilmington school principal and administrator had a long-term contract mm -hmm. when we went into DSEG. Mm -hmm. The other school district principals and administrators did not have long-term contracts. After the first year of DSEG, half of them were fired, yep. but not one mm -hmm. administrator from Wilmington. Wow, I didn't know that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. BB, you know, it's funny. I remember because I was, um, you talking about Kamala Harris, and, and you and I had this conversation in Dover. Mm -hmm. um, um, and, and to be honest, I mean, I'm being very candid. Um, BB came out and formed like the first African American group, and I was a part of it. But it was, it was, a, it was a strange time because yeah. we, were, we were that first desegged group that went to high school in 78, and we were lost. Yeah. And, and you know, there was a lot yeah. of N words being spoken. Yeah. And, and BB came out there and helped mm -hmm. us out, BB. So tell me a little bit about how you involved it. Because I know you get a little mad sometimes. You get mad on this show. <laughs> <laughs> I, I guess um, once everything went down um, in, very, in a very disappointing way, our, excuse me, our efforts were uh, to help 
people to understand what was that thing? We did a um, sociodrama piece with the National Conference of Christians and Jews at mm -hmm. that time. And it was, can you hear me? Yeah. So we would go around to the kids, set up these situations uh, to help the kids uh, in a dramatic way. We'd do a little scenario and then the kids would talk about it. And it was like, uh, why are you all sitting together in the cafeteria? And I think that uh, our goal was, <clears throat> excuse me, my goal primarily was this norm. It wasn't about why are all the kids sitting together in any great big thing, afraid of all the white kids right. at the school and all that. It was that we enjoy each other. Right. We like eating together. We like talking together. The only free time we have is uh, in the cafeteria. Why are you going to make a whole lot out of this? I think that what has happened over the years, not only with DSEG and this sort of thing, that a lot of white people make the mistake of thinking that African Americans want to be such an integral part of them and friends and house and visiting and all. That's not true. The only thing, <clears throat> excuse me, that we want in terms of equitable relationships and that kind of thing is simply to be free to pick and choose where we want to go, when we want to go, and how we want to do it without any barriers. I don't need to go to your house for dinner. I enjoy eating with people that look like me. <laughs> right. I enjoy going to church with people that look like me. I enjoy the singing. I don't want to go to your church, it's too quiet. Most of them that I have been to, even to do lectures or speak or something like that. The music isn't lively, I love lively music. I grew up Episcopalian and changed to Baptist because I like the music. Right. And you know, Jim, you were talking about the, 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 um, the guy Hopkins yeah, served John, on city yeah. council John, uh, for 32 years. Yeah. And yeah. you said, but you was telling me, see, I was more interested in the stuff that he owned. Yeah. Talk a little bit about that. And, and I, want, I want us to talk about some of the, like you talk about Wendell Howe, like um, Herman Sr., like some power, there were some powerful people, blacks, yeah. Yeah. who've yeah. been in this right. state, in this city, that people who are watching have no clue. And I'm listening to you guys yeah. talking today, you were talking about a lady who served in Peterson's administration. and Arva Jackson. Arva Jackson, I never heard of Arva Jackson. Uh -huh. She's a great lady. Yeah, Arva Marshall Jackson, she, yeah. She did a lot of good in, in the mm -hmm. city, but there were a lot of, that, that was fascinating about Wilmington was really, you had great leaders in all different kinds of phases mm -hmm. of this. Of and these community. guys own stuff. You just said, you said one of the guys owned a theater or a parking lot? Oh, yeah, he owned theater. the downtown well, theater. Downtown where theater. Where wow. The only place that African-Americans could go mm -hmm. to see a movie mm -hmm. was at, at his theater. And then he owned the, the parking lot, a storage. I mean, he was a mm -hmm. prominent businessman in this town. And he lived right at 10th and French. I never knew that. Had a white house there. Yeah. A big, big white house there. He, he lived there. And he served, I think, if I'm not mistaken, 1911 to 1945. See, I always heard about Hattie Fell and, and Dutch Burton. Yeah. Those Hattie was the, a great person. That, yeah. Those were the only ones in politics that Dutch I... Dutch was a good person. You know what I mean? Well, and Dutch was Herman crazy. Holloway. Well, Herman Holloway Sr., of course. Senior. Yeah. yeah, he was good. He, he, was, he was the good. longest Ooh. server, right? He was, he was very good. good. Yeah. He was very good. He yeah. was one of the best politicians I've ever seen. Ever. Heard. Ever, and yes. People don't understand that. People do all this judgment about, he said, he did, he bought, he doesn't, mm -hmm. he did his job he was a great better speaker. than yes, anybody he did. I've yes, known. Yes, he did. And uh, uh, he was a smart man, funny man. Very funny. And uh, <laughs> uh, you, you enjoy, if you were around the senator, you enjoy so, it. So if you guys would think about who influenced you, Right, let's talk about that. Who influenced your thinking? Ooh, yeah, that's a good question, right? Say that again. Like, who influenced your thinking? Who, like, oh. molded the way you thought? I mean, outside of your mother or father, right? That's the easy one. Like, and, like, for me, like, all you minds, right? Yeah. I remember having conversations with Jim Gilliam Jr. Yeah. I remember having oh, conversations with uh, uh, Al Plant. And you guys oh, sitting yeah. here. Like, yeah. I remember Ted Blunt would take me to the side and just teach me about finances. Yeah. Jim, in an article, said Norman's not going to figure it out until he figures out politics or business, remember? Right. And at first, I was mad, <laughs> and, and me and him talked. Yeah. He said, I didn't mean anything offensive, and I'm glad I made the right decision. I thought right. about business. But it, you said something earlier, Jim, that we don't agree to disagree anymore. Uh -huh. It gets personal. Yeah. And that's why I was asking you guys to think yeah. like that. If you guys could kind of, because the people who are watching, 
have no clue of what mm -hmm. we're talking about. I think I think the other thing is, not only did we know one another, yeah. we knew those younger than us. Right? Mm. And yeah. they communicated with us. You knew me from just basketball That's initially. Right. That's remember? right. Yeah. With the all-star game at Bancroft. That's yeah. right. All right. Well, in my neighborhood, I was the president of the Neighborhood Civic yeah. Association. Yeah. Mm. At my school, I was the chair of the PTA. So it was being involved in a number of things that impacted my kids. Mm. And that's what really got me that involved job. because you wanted to make sure that those things that were out there were going to benefit them. And you said that earlier, they just don't even yeah. get involved yeah. with their communities anymore, right? So yeah. now yeah. when you look at people that, that are involved today, the question ought to be asked of them, are you involved with where you live? Are you involved with your own kids? That's right. Mm. Because all of our Excellent. kids knew us, yes. had a personal relationship, were able to come up and talk to us. We could walk through any neighborhood mm -hmm. and people would know who we were. Right. We weren't just a name on a cornflakes mm -hmm. box. Mm -hmm. We were a name in the community. <coughs> we were there because, you know why? We cared. Yeah. Mm. The other thing is, too, we knew the leaders and we respected them, even if we disagreed with them. Yeah. Mm. It's, they, mm. We can tell you, leaders sometimes would do things and we disagree with them, but you didn't come out and bash them about no. the fact you disagreed uh -uh. with them. Uh -uh. The point was, we all have different points of view because none of us come from the same background, really. Uh -uh. We, we may think we do, mm -hmm. but we don't. Mm -hmm. We don't have the same experiences. So to me, like, who do you listen to well, I grew up, I, my grandmother was the one I listened to mostly because she either uh -huh. killed you with, with the <laughs> stick or, or, or you listened to her. But um, uh, we were taught that, okay, <clears throat> nobody's different from you and nobody's better That's or right. worse. You know, it's funny, they bring this up, I'm gonna throw this out to you too, B. So do you think that the school systems messed up a little bit when they took out some of that discipline out of the schools? Or do you think it was too hard? Do you think it was time? I, I don't think they did. See, I got paddled by yeah. Marcus Pritchard and Elsie and those guys, right? Oh, yeah. <laughs> but I didn't, I learned, right? That's right. Well, now, I wanted you to learn. Yeah. So what do you think about that? They, you know, education? It, I don't think it was, I don't know, Ted, correct me. I don't think it was so much that they took it out of the schools. They changed yes, the methodology of discipline to my way of thinking. And then when the schools were integrated, so, so my question to you, though, yeah. do you think that was a necessary or do no. you think it, so you think that it was good that they stopped it? I don't think I. OK, I think that it was bad when people stopped caring about or and and I hate saying this because somebody's going to say, oh, you can't say that's OK. You can say it on community. Call but time. It would appear that nobody cared enough about the children to my way of thinking, in the integrated setting, to want them to be respectful and to uh, act like they should in a school setting. Mm -hmm. You gotta remember, a yeah. lot of the teachers yeah. and administrators did not want those kids in That's their right. school. In the first place. They didn't want to teach That's them, right. but there was no process by which that was dealt with. That's right. I mean, they tried to set up uh, groups that would look at school problems yeah. that would take place yeah but there was no understanding that you had two very distinct cultures coming, coming together, together and they are nothing alike mm -hmm. do you realize that the first time i saw uh, uh heroin in the city of wilmington i was going to work one day up 7th street mm -hmm. and i saw this white package <laughs> a little package laying on on the curb and so i picked it up and i said i I was pretty sure it was drugs. Now, this was before the onslaught of drugs, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. but that was 1978. Mm. And our kids learned a lot about the big time drugs, yeah, yeah. cocaine and heroin, when they integrated the schools. I mean, there was just so much. Wow. That so you think did integrating not, the schools just messed up a lot of stuff? Well, oh, they didn't yeah. think about all this. Yeah. They were, listen, the court had to come up with a remedy. The court said, well, what are we going to do? They came up with busing. But nobody came up with, what are you going to do about education? Mm -hmm. What are you going to do right. about the differences? Right. What are you going to do about <coughs> inspiration and all the rest? What are you going to do about mm -hmm. 
making sure that you had African Americans, for example, in place in management, not mm -hmm. just in teaching. Mm -hmm. So there was just so many things mm -hmm. that had to be dealt with that wasn't dealt with until mm -hmm. later. And by the time a lot of stuff started happening, it was too late because a lot of kids got destroyed in the process. Mm -hmm. Not that everything was failured about it because there's a lot of successful kids that did get through. But successful kids are successful kids. That's yeah, the way regardless. I look at it. You know, yeah. all three of you were around during the 68 rides, and you guys <laughs> seen a lot. Yeah. No, he was in 68, he was around here. I was around in Philadelphia well, in 65 when the rides were in Philly. Oh, wow. Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, let's talk about that. Like, what, what's the difference in what's happening now and what happened then? Well, there's a big difference. Yeah. Remember that, that uh, mm. Martin Luther King was assassinated in 68. Yeah. Yeah. Right. But if you look at the, the Black Power Movement, which started in about 1965, and I think they had the first right. major right. Black Power Conference in Philadelphia, right. uh, there was a lot of words and a lot of anger and things being yeah. said. And uh, out of that, Newark and other mm -hmm. places had, Philadelphia had explosions. You had the big one in Los Angeles, uh, Watts, uh, where you Rodney had that. King. They were way yeah. before 68. Yeah. The, the problem again was, is that there was no connect between what was being changed and going on right. and what was happening in these communities. Right. So by the time things really filtered, you're talking many years before the impacts mm -hmm. had, had taken place, even though these civil rights laws had been passed and all that other stuff. But the difference was it, uh, the response was to the, the King killing and to other problems with, usually with police. Uh -huh. In most cases it was with police. Mm -hmm. But the difference today is, is that, okay, you have the, the march and the demonstration and later on, here comes a whole bunch of people, uh, tearing up stores and doing things. They just benefited. Do you think it's effective? It was a big act of thievery well, that yeah. had nothing to do yeah. with the demonstration during the day that took mm -hmm. place. Mm -hmm. They were two separate acts mm -hmm. because the people, I'll guarantee you, a lot of the people, if you look at Missouri, a lot of people got involved. Then they, uh, when certain times came and it got dark, then all of a sudden the trouble started. Mm -hmm. And if you look at most of these marches, it's the same thing. The trouble started in the evening. What were people stealing wigs? What's that got to do with the oh, shooting? Please, yeah. What you stealing an ATM? Mm. What are you stealing? Sneakers. Sneakers and the sneakers. jackets and all that. What, mm -hmm. what, what has that got mm -hmm. to do, mm -hmm. or liquor? Mm -hmm. What has that got to do with the fact of you were upset over the George, killing George. of this person or yeah. others, because mm -hmm. there were others that died also. So anyway, I just think that it was a different kind of scenario. When these people did their thing, it wasn't about gimme, gimme, gimme. I don't know, if you notice in 68, the people who went into the stores were adults after the kids yes, had done their thing. Yes, yes. But these are kids. kids. Yeah. Mimi, what do you think? Well. Oh, do you think do you think the marches now like um, are I think that uh, the marches that we're looking at now uh, and the signs that we're seeing, you know, on different in different areas. I never thought I'd see signs that say Black Lives Matter in Holland Park in Greenville. <laughs> now. I said, whoa. So I guess I'm like a John Lewis on this one. Uh, it's, it's a good thing. Uh, but mm -hmm. I, I agree with you, uh, Jim. We need as so-called leaders. Uh, and African-Americans, we need to call a spade a spade. If you're stealing, you're stealing. And I'm gonna tell you, that's exactly what you're doing. Don't try to dress it up. You were stealing, it had nothing to do with anything else. But I think too, that if our children knew historically about riots and protests and who was calling what and mm -hmm. da da da, that it would be a different ball game. One of the worst riots in the world was New York City with number of white folks, the, what is that thing? The veterans thing they called it? It was about veterans because uh, people were being recruited and sent to the wars uh, it, it, based on income. 
and white people just exploded all over the place in well, New York. So I'm trying to act like, yeah. So I'm trying to act like, yeah. so right, to act right. like it's anything new, you yeah. know. But you said something up there, you was a little yeah. pissed, even about the statues and monuments. Oh my, yeah, come on. My thing is, I, I agree with the people in the South about a General Lee statue and all that kind of stuff. That definitely is the Confederacy and, you know, this hurts. I'm paying taxes to keep this statue clean in the park. But when you really look at it, our Rodney, uh, uh, Caesar Excuse Rodney me. thing, he represents us in terms of where our place is in history. And I don't mean to be funny, but when is the last time that you saw a horse shoot a black person? Mm -hmm or call a black person the N-word. Mm -hmm. Not lately, that I know about. Mm -hmm. So I don't want our people to get distracted by bull crap, because that's what's happening. You think, <clears throat> you think a little distraction? They are. They are distracted mm -hmm. by stuff that, you know, you're getting enraged about this. What's that gonna do for the school system? What's that gonna do for your learning? And da, 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 da. And I come at people with education, and, and I'm not really bragging, but, uh, and, and, and I guess in a way I am, I'm, very, I'm a very proud black woman because when I went to college, as old as I am, when I went to college, I was third generation. My grandfather finished Howard University. Oh, wow. So don't tell me about what people can do. I got my grandfather's diplomas, 1896 and 1898 Howard University. My mother finished the University of Pittsburgh. I'm saying we didn't have a whole lot of money. It wasn't about that. It was about what you value and what you teach your children. And that's why when you ask that question about the influences, these are the things that influence me. I want people to just don't look at me just as, quote, oh, that's an African-American. I am a proud African-American of who I am, my heritage, and everything else. Thank you, baby. Because I know we grew this country. We helped found this country. So don't tell me who I am. I know who I am. Ted. I, I think what's happening today, uh, three things occur. Number one, there's chaos. Number two, right. there's change. Yes. Mm -hmm. And number three, there's cash. Yes. Mm. That's the right. three C's. That's right. Cash follows all of it. Yes. In the end, because it has to do with redistribution of where the wealth is. So after the riots, all of a sudden, people started to get jobs. Yes. Seriously, yes. couldn't get a job before, but they could get a job after that. Mm -hmm. Wow. Mm -hmm. So again, certain things happen, but there are two crowds that are out there. One that's out there for change mm -hmm. and the other that's out there for chaos. Really? And you need to separate the two. Mm -hmm. And we're not doing that. That's right. We need to call out those that are creating the chaos that makes it appear as if. Right. Everybody that wants change right. wants to tear down. That's right. Yeah. That's not the case. Mm -hmm. Remember, the, you the other issue is in too. terms of the schools. What we lack now is continuity of leadership mm -hmm. and people in the schools. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Superintendents and teachers change jobs like wearing hats. Yeah. <laughs> but wherever yeah. you see continuity, at least three to five years, with a contract given to a principal right. and teachers, right. you will see change. change. It's not a matter of more money, uh -uh. it's a matter of creating stability. And we're not doing that. Uh -uh. The issue in terms of the behavior of youngsters in the schools, prior to House Bill 85, right. it was at the discretion of there the principal. Go. House Bill 85 mandated that principals do X, Y, and Z. Right. So it took away the discretion yes. where you could discipline on the spot, where you could call the parent right. on the spot. I remember that. Yeah. That, that yeah. all of a sudden disappeared. And I think that that created a problem. Joe Johnson created what was called a... Tell people who Joe Johnson was who didn't know. He was, what was he? Yeah, I mean, people who are watching who don't know who Joe Johnson Joe Johnson was the first superintendent of the Red Clay Consolidated School District. African-American. And he was the first African-American African superintendent within that structure okay. of the reorganized school mm -hmm. districts in Newcastle County. Yep. People only talk about four, but there's six districts in Newcastle County. We don't talk about the Votech That's and right. we don't talk about Apoquinimate. That's right. But there's six school districts in Newcastle County. But Joe Johnson was the first. And we talk about the kids that are acting out and disruptive. He created what was called a positive learning center. And we used to have a name for those kids that acted out. We called them BAKs. 
You say, what does that mean? Bad ass kids. That's what you are. They would all go to this one location and Joe identified people that had the leadership skills and the education to work with them. Mm-hmm. You start with the youngster where he is. That's right. You're in a hole, let's start filling the hole with dirt. Wow. And Joe did that, he did that effectively. Those students stayed with him two, three years, went back into the regular school setting, right. knew how to act, did their schoolwork, walked around with the book, and did exceptionally well. Most of them even ended up going to college. Mm-hmm. It was just a matter, do you wanna put the right people, putting in the right time, to serve that population that needs the most help. Ladies and gentlemen, I hope you're enjoying this show. I was gonna take a break, but I'm enjoying the dialogue so very much <laughs> that we're gonna keep this rolling. Um, you were gonna chime in and say something, Jim? Well, you know, it, it's what Ted is saying is that all of these things that we're talking about mm-hmm. is that there are so many issues today that you could get involved with mm-hmm. if you want to. Mm-hmm unemployment, education, housing, they just go on and on and on. But when you come down to resources to deal with a lot of these issues, it isn't there. There's the resources are disappearing rapidly. Mm-hmm. If you look at the federal government, it's all like it's almost in disarray mm-hmm. because nothing is really being done that affects our communities. So you got, <clears throat> I remember when I came on council, we had $8 million in community development funds. We had $10 million oh my. in economic I got there way too late. <laughs> yeah. yeah, you did. <laughs> we had CETA money for training and for, uh-huh. for jobs and all that. That was in directly to city government. Uh-huh. Within a matter of a few years, all of that disappeared. There's no economic yeah. development money coming yeah. to the city. There is only about $3 million of of community economic development money because it's being reinvested or so they get a little bit of interest, Mm -hmm. but it's only about 3 million. And after that, that's it. Mm -hmm. There's police money, there's specialized stuff, but you don't have any money really to do anything. Think about it. When when I first came on, we could build a house for $25,000. Today it's $200,000. So you got a million bucks, two hundred thousand dollars. Yeah. Well, You're five telling houses. Me. Yeah. <laughs> Whoop de do. Uh, there, there's just the economics is what a lot of people aren't dealing with. Uh-huh. Is that that financing, and and to me, uh, children, we should have integrated history. We don't. <laughs> you, you know we don't. We have African American history floating. Please. Yeah. And then we have American history, which is all about people that we can name. But when I grew up, let me see, I, th- I think it was uh, George Washington Carver, yeah. a few people that yeah. we got to know Douglas, for George one week. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And that was it. That was it. Mm-hmm. And until you integrate the history so that people feel they are understanding each other. Mm-hmm. We understand other people much, much better than we understand our own. Yeah, what I like about you three, you all three are like historians. <laughs> you know, no, seriously, I mean, and I think that that's why, and I hope people are really enjoying this. Mm-hmm. You know, mm-hmm. I mean, and, and we have open dialogue, you know? Mm-hmm. And BB, you know, I was gonna ask you, um, are you frustrated about the violence in our streets? Yeah, and, I am. You know, because we talk about mm-hmm. a lot of things, but black on black crime is, is yeah. saddening. It is. And it, and it hurts. It, it hurts. Mm-hmm. It's painful. Uh, and again, when I was saying that, I said, I, I, I want to, I think it's, you know, we need to march yeah. when you have oh, police yeah. violence. Mm-hmm. But can we also march when we have five kids between shot. the ages of 10 and 15 on. shot yes. on 5th yes. Street at a basketball court yes. by Bancroft? Yeah. You agree with me on that? I do. And the thing that really <laughs> hurts more than anything. Uh, you know, and, and, I, and I know people are going to think I'm nuts for saying this, but what hurts me more than anything is that the young people that are doing the shooting, they don't think anything of themselves. When you hate somebody that looks like you that much, or you think so mm. little of life in a mm. period, that this is what you will do for your entertainment or to make you feel good or to make you feel like a person, they are the ones to be pitied. And even more so, excuse me, that mother that lost her child, her mm. four-year-old sitting uh, on a, uh, uh, what do you call that thing? The, the, the stoop? Yeah, the, the, she was on a little bicycle, tricycle thing, one oh. of those things. 
But to me, it's a challenge to black males, young black males, and I've met with some of them because we talked about this. And I said, okay, we're talking about police brutality and this, that, and the other. Let me show you some brutality. And I pulled out the newspapers for the last five weeks to the guys, I won't say who was sitting around the table, but we were all there, the young leaders, and all of you would know them. And I said, this happened, this happened, they had nothing to do with the police. This was black on black. But the the we've got to not only look at <clears throat> excuse me, the black on black crime, but we have to look at what are the reasons here? What makes these children hate each other so much mm. that this is what you're doing? This is frightening to me. Wow. This is mm. frightening. That poor kid that lost her life, thank God, a young person, I know where they are. It's sad for the family, but by the same token, the people that are selling guns in black neighborhoods out of the trunks of cars every day we know what they look like. They look like us. And it's big business, y'all. It's big business. On the west side, it's humongous business. In certain parts of the east side, it's humongous business. And as old as I am, if I can go to where the streets are and see them selling the guns out of the trunk of the car, when somebody calls and tells me stuff like that, why don't you all know it? Wow. And why is it that we don't believe that we should attack this kind of problem just like we attack other problems? And to my, way of, to, to, to my way of thinking, and I'll shut my mouth, mm. I believe if we respected the entire uh, system of education, opportunities to learn, teachers, if teachers were more like educational engineers, revered, respected, well-trained, knew what they were doing, a lot of this would be curved. I'm not taking anything off of parents' responsibility. That's not what I mean. But I am saying to you, when uh, these babies are having babies and these kids go to school and nobody gives a rat's behind as to how they learn, what they learn, when they learn or whatever, and you just go because uh, this is what you do during the course of a day, then it's our fault mm -hmm. that we have to look at something like this and say, this cannot continue. My thing is that we should upgrade the whole system of learning opportunities called education to the point that it's up there ranking with the best of them. The doctors, the lawyers, the engineers, they're educational engineers. They got your child's brain for 12 years. You don't think they have to know what they're doing and to be in, and, and that they are pivotal to your child's life? Five days a week, seven hours a day for 12 years? Come on, y'all. Hey, look, I was going to hit one of your favorite sins. Come on, child. <laughs> hey, Ted, you know, it, 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 this, this, I'm, I'm loving this. Like, you and I had a conversation. And a true story, I went down to Western Salem, and I didn't know Ted was that accomplished. Oh. Um, you know, but how yeah. you went from Philadelphia and got to North Carolina, right, and yeah. to where you are now. I mean, that right there is something that needs to be yes. talked about. Yeah. yeah Tell me a little bit about that, down there, right? <laughs> You know, no, I, I think <laughs> sometimes people look at where you are, not where you've Come been. Come on now. Come on. Yeah. You see, so you can look at any of us and say, That's oh, right. you guys are really doing well. Yeah. But uh, you didn't grow up in the projects in North Philadelphia. Right. Come on. You, Come on. you know, you didn't have to go get that surplus food. Right. That's you know, right. you didn't have to get that welfare check. That's right. You didn't have to go to public schools That's in a right. tough neighborhood. And then to get the opportunity to move on because the community made an investment yes. in me. Yes. And you guys keep talking about the community, right? Yes. That, that's what's missing. I'm well, talking about you don't have older men and women. Have that sense of community. Whether they went to church or that's whether or right. not they were in school, they were connected to the neighborhood. That's right. If you were to go back 70 years ago, the educators lived in the same neighborhood. That's right. Where that's the right. kids went to school. The doctors lived in the same neighborhood where the kids went to school. People that were business people lived in the same, same neighborhood. neighborhood. The east side once had 70% home ownership. That's right. 70. Mm -hmm. Now it's probably 30. Yeah, it's it's maybe 30, and that's maybe. a high number. Maybe. Rental. Yeah. But again, that's that community, and people knew one another. That's right. So if you acted up before you got home, oh, your yes. mama got a call. Yes, yes. This is, different, so that, so this, is a great, this is great conversation. Yeah, yeah. But that's, it's that's, a different that's, society that's, that we're dealing with. Do you, do you realize in the city of Wilmington that uh, for children under 18 in the African-American community, 80% uh -huh. are headed by single, single women? Single women. 80%? Is that high? It's that high. Yeah, it is. Wow. 80%. Yeah. Now, 
that wasn't existing uh -uh. when we were coming up. Uh -uh. You had males, you had grandparents, you had uncles, you had yep. all kinds of people yep. that could box you in your head. If where, you did go, where did it go south then? What happened? Well, over time, I mean, when you look at I-95, for example, the construction, look how many people yes, lost their they homes. Got split. And never split came city. back to what, what us. What was that? When did it happen? Well, back in the 60s when Single they were building yeah. I-95. Yeah. Then you, then you got urban renewal, which was an utter failure, uh, please. actually, because it bought up houses mm -hmm. and then the federal government in its infinite wisdom mm -hmm. cut the funding. Mm -hmm. So now cities were left with vacant houses all over the place. Mm -hmm. Then you had the riots. You had three major events which really hurt. And then on top of that, you had mall development and suburban development. So if you count all of those things, what you had was a total economic disaster mm -hmm. hitting cities which mm -hmm. left behind large numbers of people with no way out. Mm -hmm. And don't forget about the factories in Wilmington that closed down. All yeah. of them. Yeah. You, can, mean, just, you, you had... can go to the riverfront, look at the Bloom building. Yeah. Just yeah. that yeah. one alone. What was the Bloom building? Uh, directly across the street from Christiana Landing. Then you had DuPont was big here, right? Yeah, yeah sure. DuPont Company, right? But, but still, it couldn't handle the whole thing. But all these factories, you had a clothing factory in West Center City. They did piece work. You had one over in, uh, in the east side or northeast. You had the leather factories. I mean, in West Center City, I think one, two. I think you had at least three in West Center City because they just tore them down when they did urban renewal. But uh, again, our society t did a complete change. And what happened was, is that poor people stayed poor and more people got poor. And then policies of the government, all the funding started going to the states not to cities. Oh, yeah. so then the state could just do what they that, want. All that stuff you hear about, all oh, the mayors ought to be taking care of this crime and da 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 da. Now that's nice to say, but they're the ones that control the money. That's right. And it's not coming to cities. Uh -uh. It's going to the states, who then distribute it out. Do you know how much money we got out of stimulus package for when 08, when everything blew up in the-, in the How much? We got, and they're still working on it, Market Street. <laughs> you see out there where they built the, the uh, 76ers yeah, facility? Uh -huh. They're changing in the water and uh -huh. all like yeah. that because it flooded so much out there. Oh, that was floodplain, yeah. I'm saying that was our stimulus package to, complete, to create jobs in our city. Yep. Now, where did the rest of it go? It went to balanced budgets and all kind of things. Mm -hmm. So. When you look so at why stuff. we have this, yeah. is that you got sociological, you got all kinds of problems that are not being dealt with. Mm -mm. Remember, at one time, if you, I, I, when I grew up, do you know how much unemployment we had announced? <laughs> I, I don't know what year it was, but yeah. it was so funny. Do you know how many people were unemployed <laughs> in my hometown? How many? One. Mm -hmm. Everybody's working. Everybody was working. Even even we kids could go out and get jobs. Yeah. You know what's funny? I'm sitting here listening to you guys, and you guys were talking about education. What came to my mind? Hicks Anderson. Oh, oh my yeah. goodness, yeah. Hicks. Yeah, he was with us Hicks, on our Hicks. on the committee not to yeah. desegregate. I mean, but these guys, I mean, yeah. I'm just thinking about fighters, right? Please, yeah. yeah. Well, he loved kids, and, and if yeah, you looked at Title I, mm -hmm. he almost wrote that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, right. Yeah. And But he loved kids. Guys like Ted, Ted worked, mm -mm. you know, with kids. Yep. You, you. That's where I got the ideal from. That's it's right. Per, you Am I right, Ted? Uh -uh. Yeah. Well, you look how long you worked with yeah, kids. Yeah. But do you remember that Hicks was the first one to react uh, when Sheila Farrell was that Peachtree killer? He, I mean, I thought I, it was a that's the one time I have right. never seen him so angry and so upset. Mm -hmm. That was another anything. riot, right? Yeah. With, yeah. with that. Oh, we were, it, well, not a lot of people, but no, we were well, on you the had street a, it, you in had the middle basically of, uh, out of North Washington Market street, street Extension protesting that. But I want to just say this to our listeners. If you really want to know what's going on and how these things happen, look at that organization, ALEC. That's the, uh, what do they call it? American Legislative Exchange Council. Look it up. 
Alec. And you would be amazed at to everything that goes down. What is Alec? And it's a bunch of corporates, Republicans and otherwise, that actually run this country. And you would be surprised. Just And you made me think about it when you said <laughs> something about the business. You would be amazed. Everything is dictated, whether it's hidden or not or whatever. Believe me, Alec is huge. And everything that's done is dictated uh, according to what this Alec Council decides is going to happen in the whole of the United States, from prisons to schools to everything. Do you, you, know, do you think we'll ever get a, another uh, woman test school system or no. high school? Oh, no. God. If we do, the one thing that has to be guaranteed yeah. is what Ted said very early. Yeah. The money. Yeah, money. If you're not yeah. going to do it. Gonna you do can't it. do it just by saying, we're going to do yeah. you a nice thing. Yeah. Here's mm -hmm. the school district. Now yeah. make it operate. Yeah. But I got to be honest, and I'm going back to what you guys are saying, and I was a kid. I mean, I was in 11th yeah. grade. Yeah. But and you talk about community. A lot of people who went to Newark High School with me, 80% of them dropped out. Certainly, it might not be that high, but a lot yeah, of the black 65%. people. 65%. Yeah. Yeah. No, no, no. I'm telling you, we went. We had to get up five o'clock in the morning yeah. and get on that bus yeah. to go to Newark, and it was just, it was oh. petrified. Mm -hmm. And a lot of those guys, Gussie and all those guys, mm -hmm. went there for like two, three months. You never saw them again. But oh. it was the structure. The structure was oh, you know, the city won the fight, but we lost the war. We lost right. the war. So Let me ask you a question. We ended up having to travel for nine years. That's, well, that's what I was going to ask you. They had three. to travel for three. But why? Why? Three. Because that's how the judge set it up. So it's, we had no no other recourse. But it's about race. Oh, that no. Listen, this, I, I'm gonna tell you something. Uh, I'm telling the white community. That's right. As, as America as a whole. That's right. Deals with their racism. Thank you. It will not end. Mm -mm. It's not up to mm -mm. us mm -mm. having to get out in the street or do anything mm -mm. about it because we should be just what you said. Yeah. If I wanted to live there, it shouldn't be a yeah, question. Be if right. I want to go yeah. to the bank, it shouldn't be a question. Yeah. If I want to walk down the street, yeah. if I want to live in peace, whatever, yeah. that's not available. Uh -uh. Wow. Mm -hmm. Think about it. Mm -hmm. And we, you know, when you say why do they why do they do it? They do it because there's a loss of value of life. Yeah. There's no vision of the future. They have no future. Mm -hmm. It's now or mm -hmm. never. It's mm -hmm. today. Yeah. And if you ever look at the story of, um, uh, oh, he did the Shaft. The Shaft, guy, Shaft. Oh, yeah. Huh? Yeah. Shaft. Shaft. No, that? I mean the, uh, the the producer of Shaft. Oh, You know, oh, the photographer. Yeah. yeah. Oh, I know. Um, I, God, I can't yeah. think. Anyways, it'll come to me because I'm getting Didn't older. My brain, my brain, huh? Did Alex he? Haley? Alex Haley. No, no. not Haley. Uh -uh. This is the photographer that worked for Life. Oh, and yeah, was that Monte Slee? No. No, no. Uh -uh. I know you He came about. after I'm on after okay. that. But anyway, you you you'll know who, who it is. If, but you was always a Frederick Douglass fan too. Oh yeah, well that's my hero is Frederick <laughs> Douglass. No, see, but, see how I remember? Well he was alone. You have you have me read it. about him. I didn't even know I didn't know the word order until I started reading about I mean I he was a funny. great he was great. Yeah, he was. But I'm, what I'm talking about, this photographer, he did a major expose, which they had actually out at the Delaware Art Museum. They showed his works. Uh, but he did an expose on the kids. Gordon in New Parks. York. Gordon. Gordon Parks. Gordon Parks. On kids in New York. Thank you, Ted. He's younger than I, so he can remember. <laughs> but it, <laughs> Black and white. Anyway, yeah. And yeah. he did, showed these gangs fighting each other, Gordon killing Parks. each other. I'm going to write that name down. Yeah. Gordon Parks. He oh, he's in, famous. Uh, what's, the, what's the magazine he, he was he in He did so Learning much. Tree. Uh, he did Shaft. He did a lot of movies. Wow. And he was a photographer. Was in, like, but post, anyway, he did know, an expose he the on magazines. these gangs in New York, African-American gangs, and how they were beating and killing each other. Now, that was way back in the 50s and 40s. Yeah. Now. Yeah. When I came to Wilmington, what did I come to Wilmington for? Because they said they wanted to stop the gang fighting between African-American gangs in Wilmington. Mm -hmm. Wow. It's not new. No, it's not new. The mm -hmm. thing that's mm -hmm. new is the fact that the weapons today are enormous. Enormous, yeah. You touch that trigger and it just goes, boom. Yeah. 
You don't, don't have to don't be have good at aim yeah. or nothing. It ain't like the old West, clocking the gun and firing. Mm -hmm. You just tap it and you can fire. Mm -hmm. And zoop, you got a whole clip gone. Mm -hmm. My feeling is, and I, I'll keep saying it, nothing's changed. Oh, Ooh, I'm, I'm glad you're getting upset. There you go. Yeah, Ready I'm to get up. Upset because it really <laughs> well, hasn't it does, changed. It does upset it you. It does make you pissed off. Because the laws have changed, but people, but people haven't yeah. changed. Mm -hmm. And it goes back I, to what you said, economics. Yeah, but again, oh, yeah. it goes back to two words. One is called policy. That's what you write down. And the other is called politics, which is the law. Yeah. So you, you write your policy, then you convert it into the law. Mm -hmm. And it affects you from the moment you're born to the moment you die. That's right. But you know, you can look at, look at 50 states. Do we have a black governor? I don't think we have a black governor, right? There's Doesn't no matter. black governors. Well, Doesn't we matter. had have, been, not in Delaware, but well, I'm just saying in the yeah. in the country. Why? Why you said it doesn't matter? Yeah, the guy in New it York. It doesn't. The blind um, guy in it, New York. It, uh, until until uh, the the historical until historically, I would say, and I mean that in more yeah. ways than one. Not historical as okay, presence and that kind of thing. Until the history of this country is changed to recognize the humanity of African Americans and what we have to offer, et cetera, et cetera, what we have offered, nothing's, it doesn't make any difference who it is. It could be the whitest governor in the world, but if the, if the uh, community of the United States of America and this state in particular respected all, knew everybody's history, et cetera, wouldn't make any difference what color it was. It just wouldn't matter. Because how many times have you seen blacks in anything and it made so much difference that other than blacks in a picture. Come on now, let's be for real here. And yeah, we're still counting first. We, you got that right. Yeah, right. That's right. I mean, Obama the first. first. Hey. Yeah. Lisa Blunt Rochester the first. The first. The first. Yeah. yeah. And she's a great lady and she should get reelected. But, you know, I, I the point is, is that it, it doesn't matter <laughs> if <laughs> we struggle. That's right. And demonstrate and beg and plead and all the things. Cause you hear them talk and they keep saying, why do they always complain about slavery? Why oh, do they always please. talk about that? Why do they always, yeah. they always beg and they always. Yeah. But they won't deal with themselves. That's right. When you're sick with a mental illness, you won't deal with your problems like Kanye West. Yeah. He won't deal with his problems, he's sick. Now look how long he's been sick. What a powerful conversation. What a, I want, I, um, I want all three of you to kind of close in your own way. We have a few minutes, but I hope, and I mean this, from, I, I've enjoyed this. It's like a sponge every time I talk to you guys. Wow. And, and I mean it, I mean, it's emotional. It's like, wow, like, don't you, I just wish that the folks who we're trying to get to get it. So to Ted in closing, just um, summarize wherever you want to go. Whatever no, I, I just think that, that the key word is, is relationships. Mm -hmm. You know, so many people get to so many powerful positions, mm -hmm. but they tend to forget the people that carry them to the dance. Thank mm. you. And regardless of our agreements or disagreements, mm -hmm. we would still socialize with one another. Mm -hmm. We would still go out and drink coffee, drink tea, <laughs> drink wine with one another still disagreeing and we did that when you went but out not outside. disrespecting sorry about that go ahead yeah that that's the big word you know you don't want to disrespect somebody because they disagree with it a lot of people i disagree with but that doesn't mean i have to disrespect that's them right. that's key i like that yeah but again it's it's that personal relationship that's why it's it's pivotal in all of our social systems whether it's the church what's the minister's relationship to his flock mm -hmm. in politics what's your relationship to your constituents yeah. in the school system what's your relationship to your students mm -hmm. every social system that's successful mm -hmm. there are very good positive relationships mm -hmm. i like that bb uh, my only thing would be this <laughs> i know y'all don't think i'm nuts but when we allow a community like we have in the whole United States and actually globally to uh, deny the humanity of a person because of the pigmentation of their skin, then you're really saying that God didn't know what he was doing. Mm. That's offensive to me. And that's offensive to God. We need to look at it because wow. it's real. Thank you, BB. Jim? 
Well, I don't have any words of wisdom. I think that uh, they both covered the issues of relationships and people. But until this country faces its well, own problems, thank you. Don't don't call a meeting and have me sitting up there discussing what I think about race in That's America. Right. That's right. If you don't cure yourself, yeah. If you don't cure yourself, if you don't work at your own belief systems and why you act the way you do and why you react the way you do, because uh -huh. I can tell you some real dirty yeah. secrets about people that you would never dream yeah. would be racial in their attitudes, yeah. but they are. Mm. So I think we 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 say we. We're Christian in nation and believe in God and all these evangelists running around crazily talking about how they can forgive people because mm -hmm. the president of the United States, but he can't forgive anybody else. Sure. And they can't mm -hmm. talk about the issues of what people do right. and don't do until the reality comes with that. You know, we can come back to life again five times and it'd still be the same. Mm -hmm. Something as simple as the Voting Rights Act. Oh, yes. Mm -hmm. Something as simple as that. An act requires an action by the legislative body mm -hmm. every 25 years. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but if it was law, it would not require any action mm -hmm. once it passes. Mm -hmm. Wow. Whew. Thank you, thank you, thank you. <laughs> and, and, and viewers, I hope you've enjoyed this. We probably could talk for two hours. I mean, like, Again, I've gotten so much history and so much knowledge, and I've been very fortunate to start at 18. I was a young guy listening to these folks, and I hope that you enjoyed and tune in again next week to Community Cross by another point of view. And I'm gonna thank my guests again, Norman. I'm Norman Oliver, your host. I'm out of here. Oh, that's, that's